Okay. Brad. Hey, Palika, you were on there an hour earlier. <laughs> yes, did, I was. Did you think it was an hour earlier? No. <laughs> I, what we, what, I what used, but I wanted to try out. Oh. Okay. Well, who's who's the moderator here? I think I I'm I'm the admin in terms of I've set it up. I think um, Roshana may have got the questions sent to her. Okay. You just need to uh, make sure everyone should get informed. Uh, the day before, when it's happening, at the di in the different time zones. I had it written down at 6.30, and I would have organized myself a little different. Maybe it was my mistake, I don't know, but I had it, I had it down for then. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll be more accurate next time when I send the invite. Yeah, that's just what, you must do that for Deloitte, don't you? Yeah, yeah. As in, usually the calendar should automatically do it, so I'm a bit surprised, but I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Okay, yeah. If you set it up, then it'll, it'll send out. Okay, so we're going to be just a little... I, I don't think I have an hour, but anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. And I'm at least we're in London uh, tomorrow day after tomorrow and probably see most of uh, well I won't see the people in Scotland or Wales but I'll see most most others um, okay I'm, I'm seeing you Merle and I'm just thinking yeah, that something uh, I had in my mind about Radul on the Nishwar, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, please go watch your phone. Well, I'm here. I'm ready. Oh, here's... Okay, well, if it comes to mind, there's something. Okay, anyway, once I remember, I'll uh, let you know. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. And uh, the Kirtan family. Okay, so uh, uh, I push not to the Kirtan family. Hey, what's happening in Birmingham with the Birmingham Temple, or should I ask? Mm -hmm. There's like an interim committee at the moment that's sorting everything out, so Dr. Brother is heading it up. Um, so I'm not sure about the details. He'll keep and probably fill you in as to what's going on. Management committee that's working on things. Hello. Hare Krishna. Okay, I'm just going to close this. Uh... Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I don't know if you can hear Okay, me. so. Uh... What's the uh, what's the news? Okay, uh, Chaitanya Lee has a question. Start off. Chaitanya Lee. Yeah. Hi, Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna Um, my question was in regards to the uh understanding of curses in pastimes. Um, often we, we see, or we, you know, we hear about uh, certain devotees getting cursed, but then they have a, <clears throat> alongside that, there's a boon that they will uh, be freed of the curse uh, by seeing the Lord. Um, and it kind of seems to be that a lot of curses seem to end in a blessing or um and i was just wondering if this is always the case you know with, within past times and then my second question is in regards to curses and us conditioned souls it's easier if you people just ask one question at a time because then i i, I can concentrate on it sure um, no 
doesn't necessarily, you know, you just have to read history. If you read, uh, read Shastra, then it doesn't mean that all curses have a boon along with them. I guess it depends who's the one who's cursing. And, uh, you know, they usually, the people who get cursed sometimes uh, ask for forgiveness and then the Brahmin heart softens and uh, he, he gives a gives a happy ending to the thing uh, but it's not uh, well I was going to say uh, generally the curses don't come from the best quality Brahmins but there are examples like Nara and Manigriva and Alakavera those then are really uh, pastimes that are going on under Krishna's direction and not under the material energy's direction. But there are many others, uh, other Brahmins who are not uh, not in the same category as now. Uh, what was the other question? Um, thank you, Garaj. The yeah, the second part was was what, <clears throat> what does, well, sometimes an astrologer or we, we may, you know, may say, oh, you, you have such and such problem because you, you were cursed by a particular person. And I was wondering about curses with, with us um, and how we can receive <clears throat> a blessing, um, you know, through, through the pain or the suffering or, the, the curse, supposed curse. I don't, I, I don't get the question. I suppose I'm wondering about uh, how do we receive, I mean, is it, how do we receive the mercy from the Lord? Is it, you know, just sort of through devotional service rather than <laughs> Everyone else needs to turn off their microphones, otherwise we get feedback. Uh, anyway, uh, even if uh, even if you're cursed, then I mean, Shula Prabhupada didn't really uh, prescribe anything else other than chanting Hare Krishna to counteract curses. You just need to be able to chant in, in the way that the mantra counteracts the curse. That's the problem. And if you don't, if you can't chant like that, then you may try other material things like gems and uh, so on to try and counteract it. But uh, ultimately, nothing uh, replaces uh, the uh, chanting. And Tatenu Kampam Shishamikshamano, curse not to, it's, uh, uh, it's our karma. This body's our karma. Uh, sorry, it's a curse. But the benefit of the body is that with this body, uh, you can render devotional service and you can practice spiritual life. Without this body, you can't do it. If you don't have a body, you can't can't engage in spiritual life. So the worst possible curse is that you have a material body, but you can make something good out of every bad situation if you know how to engage things in Krishna's service. So, yeah. And, and we want to just uh, have your faith. Uh, we don't want to compromise our faith. That's why Prabhupada's answer would be chant Hare Krishna. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Garaj. Okay. Who's, who's next? I'm just looking. Question here from Gopal Guru Prabhu. 
he can't be on the call to yes. ask me. If you're not speaking loud enough, we're into the microphone. Sorry, is that is that better? Um, when you speak, I'll find out. Okay. I have a question from Gopal Guru Prabhu. Yeah. He's not able to be on the call today, but he asked if I would ask this question on his behalf. Um, he's asking that, he's saying, I'm reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the first canto, sometimes the Yadus are, are described as demigods and sometimes as eternal associates of the Lord. So how can we understand this? Some of them are demigods and some of them are eternal associates. And some of them are both. There, uh, and, uh, and, uh, when they have the Krishna's disappearance and the uh, Yadus have this sort of, uh, fight where they're fighting against each other, at least it appears to be like that, then, uh, the eternal associates go back to Dwarka, eternal Dwarka, and uh, the uh, demigods go back to the heavenly planets. When Krishna's appearing, uh, then Brahma says that uh, the Lord instructs the demigods to take birth amongst the Yadus. So those that refers to the demigods. But Krishna always appears with his eternal associates, so they're also there as well. Okay, someone else? Good morning. Krishna. Thank you for this opportunity, Thank you very much. Um, I'm recently. Hare Krishna. I, I didn't get what you said. Uh, saying thank you for this opportunity. Oh. Thank you. Um, recently you uh, spoke, as a couple of months back, you were speaking on the podcast. I think it was a recording of a meeting that you had with devotees in London. I think the devotees at the manor. And you were speaking about um, our st- or sadhana in relationship to, as you described, a lofty goal to obtain Krishna. And I think there you're referring to devotees who achieve perfection. And you could say that their sadhana was extraordinary sadhana. So, and also we can see that devotees from, you know, um, who have excelled, you know, presently they've done through, done so through extraordinary, I would say sadhana or through wonderful preaching. So, beyond what we could say, the 16 rounds and basic reading schedules. So I wonder if you could share with us more on this subject, um, the nature of uh, sadhana for, you know, doing extraordinary sadhana is often out of the grasp of devotees with families or who are managing temples who are, you know, full-time engaged. So I was wondering if you could speak about on the, perhaps the quality on, and the quantity of sadhana. And also I think you're writing your next book on this subject as well. So I wonder if you could share something on that, and okay. if that's clear. I don't remember so much the context of this extraordinary sudden business, uh, but uh, but it's certainly a uh, feature, uh, a wanting feature amongst Vaishnavas. There dedication, whether it's due to circumstances uh, or uh, just a lack of impetus uh, to the serious practice of Krishna consciousness, serious cultivation of sadhana, um, that somehow it's going to happen anyway. In other words, you chant 16 rounds and follow regulated principles as a minimum function and uh, 
And if you fulfill that numerical obligation, then that's it. And yeah. that's, uh, that's not exactly, uh, although that may be a sutra, but that's not what in Srila Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada uh, places a lot of emphasis on, on the quality of these things because there's a different, there are different grades and standards of chanting to start with. And, uh, and one won't actually be able to enter into those uh, until uh, one really learns the science of chanting, which is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. And also be very clear about what the purpose and goal is and have the right inspiration and all of that comes from being in contact with the Bhagavatam. So then, then if uh, the end result is just doing the minimum, or less it seems like uh, the attachment is to this minimum of 16 rounds, it's not even minimum, but minimal. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, that may or may not be enough. Ultimately, it's going to be up to Krishna. He's going to make the decision, not me. Uh, but uh, if, you, uh, if you see what devotees do to go back to Godhead, uh, usually it's not because they've done the minimum. Yes. Um, so I think... If I'm right, Guru Maharaj is saying that we shouldn't just be like part of like official religion, chant S16 rounds and do the basics and then just not make any effort or even above that. We should be yeah. always trying. Either someone's tied up in work or someone else is tied up in service. But, uh, you know, we have 4.30 at the latest in the morning. You may be up earlier, you may be up yeah, from 2.30 to 8.30. That's six hours of bhajan. Yeah. I don't mean bhajans, but six hours of bhajate mamana niva. Uh, of, uh, of, and that's, that's pretty good time. That's like 25% of the day. Mm. So, you know, how deeply do we go into the japa period? You know, I don't... Uh, if, I, if I'm giving class, I see someone who sleep, falls asleep more than once, I don't let him come into class anymore. I'm yes, not, yeah. For, for me, uh, after 50 years, it's too boring to tell people to stay awake. Spiritual life isn't about staying awake. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, owls are pretty advanced spiritually or other... Napoleon only slept two hours a night, but that didn't make him very spiritually qualified. Mm. I don't spend my time waking people up. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, sir. So yeah, it requires it requires quality and, and actually the quality that we put into that minimum six hours and preferably more, it will also reflect on the quality of our service. And it also reflects on the quality of our work. Of course, people who are working, they're not, you know, going to uh, go through a morning program like we do. And so that means they have to wait even more, and even more, be more intense. Yeah. Uh, it'll certainly make the quality of their work, in other words, that they're thinking, yes, I am offering the results of my work, uh, which in most cases will mean uh, uh, the results of the work is, uh, is financial. I'm offering that uh, to Krishna, but it places them in the right frame of mind and uh, sort of insulates them from being affected by all the things that are going out uh, in that outside world. But if we're distracted, if the first thing we do is open our computer, if we're sending messages and uh, emails and so on, in that whole morning, then uh, there's no way that uh, things are actually going to be of a quality nature. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, and and then if if the six hours in the morning is good, and then the, the, that gives a good opportunity 
uh, once if someone's going to work, then they can be listening uh, to classes and uh, sort of compensating uh, in that way while they're driving or taking public transport or however it is that they're moving around. Yeah, so just one last, that's what Prabhupada would mean when he, you have to mention, or well, Prabhupada said, just chant 16 rounds and go back to Godhead. I think Prabhupada, as you mentioned, Sula Bhakti Chintamani, it means pure yes. chanting. There's, there's this, uh, uh, there's this section, of course, that's quite early. This is 1966, where this newspaper reporter comes into the temple and the devotees are there doing japa or chanting and uh, yeah uh, in whatever way that people used to do it at that time and he asked uh, Prabhupada uh, what are they doing? Uh, Prabhupada said I don't know. <laughs> do they know what they're doing? Prabhupada said I don't think so. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, if, uh, if we're in touch with Bhagavatam regularly, then, then we'll really know what we're doing and we'll really value the Holy Name, we'll value the deities, we'll be able to value the Vaishnavas, and uh, we'll have a clear direction as to where we're going. We will feel inspired. Utsahan. It's, uh, that's how it works. But, uh, but if we don't, uh, then, then, then it won't happen. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, then it becomes religion, mechanical, then rituals. Yes. So you shouldn't fall prey to that. And not even in the name of service. Although that's our ultimate business is serving. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, yeah, I'm going to come on Friday. I'm going to leave from here Friday morning after day the greeting and go. Uh, drop in at the doctor on the way, and then I'll just go to the airport. And uh, Vaishnava, uh, I heard uh, Deepak and Preeti is going to pick us up. Thank you very much. Deepak's coming. Okay, and then I have, I'm going to go to the manor in the evening, and uh, some folks from Dubai who uh, usually come here, their son is going, going to school somewhere in Essex. And uh, so she's gonna come by and probably bring some folks, uh, some relatives who are actually just here recently for uh, RT. RT's at seven, right? Yes, Gore RT, yes. So I'll stay for Gore RT, and then maybe if I could talk to them in his office, I'll just have a little maha, and then I'll just go back. This it'll it'll be it'll be later my time. Okay. And then Saturday, Saturday is one of the uh, uh, festival, and. Uh, yeah, I don't think I really want to uh, sort of plug into any class uh, and I'll see, see how available we are when we're there instead. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Uh, something else? Anybody? I have a question, Gurmash. Um I was just reflecting on uh, the pastime of Guru Vasamuni and Aburish Maharaj, where Krishna makes it very clear there that if you offend my devotees, then 
he's not inclined to forgive. He wants the person who offended to go to those who he offended and you know, ask for forgiveness there. there. And, and then looking at the pastime of Indra, um, willing to destroy Raj and its res residence, um, and you know, the whole pastime of Krishna lifting Giriraj. And um, at that point, after Indra realizes that who Krishna is, then he goes to Krishna to ask for forgiveness. Um, and it appears Krishna forgives him, but he committed offenses to the Vrishvasi. So how, how to understand that in connection with um, the whole Ambrish Maharaj and uh, Durvasa Muni pastime? Well, he continues to have problems. Uh, Indra, Indra's life is full of problems. And uh, that just compounds it. And uh, that's why later on, he actually uh, goes to Navadvip. Uh, somebody's got their microphone on. I don't know who, and they're tapping on the table. Uh, and uh, that's why he goes to Navadvip uh, to do uh, austerities and to get forgiveness. But uh, there's no record of him anywhere asking for forgiveness from the bridge uh, and and so you see later on uh, when Krishna's coming for the Karijata flower then uh, again he gets in trouble his whole life is trouble he's constantly committing offenses to everybody so it's not good uh, not good to have access to unlimited power and uh, unlimited sense gratification, even if you're a devotee. So in, uh, and in the case where someone can, uh, doesn't either, doesn't get forgiveness or, uh, or uh, uh, doesn't know, sometimes uh, we, commit offense, you know it by the result, which means that your devotional activities are not bearing fruit, but you don't know who it was. So in either of those cases, the only alternative is uh, intense chanting until gradually, gradually it wears off. Sooner or later, one becomes free from offense, but it may take time quick way is to actually be able to get free from uh, the person who committed offense. Anyway, that's a, uh, that's a real problem. Yari Vaishnava Paradi Uti Hati Mata. It's uh, Vaishnava, it's the elephant offense. And especially in a society uh, it's uh, a society where newcomers are all neophytes. Uh, the tendency to make mistakes to each other is quite high. And, uh, and then uh, that pretty sort of slows down progress. So that's why Lord Chaitanya uh, warns Rupa Goswami uh, against uh, against that. Okay, well, let's have a last one. And uh, I don't feel so bad about having a shorter discussion because I'm going to be there tomorrow, or day after. Did Adhoksaja go back? I saw that the Scots were there. Is he there, Ramananda's place? He's back in Scotland, but uh, Mahatma Prabhu is here. Just now, so they are up at his class. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. How long is he staying there, Mahatma? He's leaving tomorrow. Uh -huh. Good. I'm glad some visitors are coming. Yeah, Dayananda Maharaj was here as well, and Nishinga Kamasa was just yesterday. Very good. Okay, good. 
Um, Can we might have a question, Guru Maharaj? Or I don't know if there's anybody else. Go ahead, Nima. Is that okay, Guru? Yep, yeah, Nima, you want to speak loudly? Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, my question is, uh, why did the the one so much suffering and misery in the uh, material why did the, the people are still attached to it, still want to stay in it? Uh, are you saying why is there so much suffering in the material world and people are still attracted to it? Yes, that's my question. Okay. Well, that's because they're in Maya. That's because they're in Maya and Mama Maya Duratyaya. Because uh, Maya is very powerful. And, uh, and so even though people are constantly getting beaten, they keep coming back for more. And uh, so that's uh, basically, that's, uh, that's the answer. And, and it's quite interesting that it's not that because Maya is forcing them, but it's because we're, we're attracted to Maya. We're holding on to and won't let go. So because we want to be an illusion, therefore we get put in illusion. As soon as we let go, then we're not an illusion anymore. Mm -hmm. Are you going to, you understand? Yes. Yeah. Are you going to stay brahmachari? You got you to gotta go ask your father about household life. <laughs> anyway, that's one way of of making life simpler and having more time for sadhana. Ask your mother. <laughs> Three kids takes up a lot of energy, a lot of sadhana time. Are you giving her more time now for spiritual practices? Yeah? Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, so uh, actually, there was uh, someone uh, here. Uh, the uh, well, his name is Chaivan Rishi. I forget what their family is. They're just here from Nottingham. An interesting thing is there's direct flights from Budapest to Nottingham. I don't know why anyone in the world would want to fly to Nottingham, but it's there's international airport, international flights into Nottingham. So that's, uh, that's, that's quite interesting. Did you meet with them today? I meet with them. Uh, uh, Mohan was just brought them down. They, they just came uh, for during the day. I met with them with half an hour. And uh, that was just in the midst of a lot of things. Okay. So I guess we'll see most of you uh, in a couple of days. And... Uh, Otherwise, we'll be in touch. I'm just looking at the calendar, and this time we've got to get it right. UK conference, Budapest, 25th, two weeks. In theory, that would be good for me. The 25th? Uh, Wednesday? It's two weeks from now, yeah. I'm in Budapest. No, oh, sorry. I'm in New Brindavan, I'm in America. No, no, that's no good. Uh, and, and the first, I'm coming back the first. And uh, on the second, I meet with, uh, I, with the Russian devotees. So, we're down to uh, the 9th of August, Thursday. And uh, six thirty your time, seven thirty my time. Uh, now I got it. Is a weekend possible, Guru? Just because uh, it's at six thirty on a weekday, so many devotees are still trying to get back from work and things like that. 
if it's possible, then. Uh, uh, well, we could do it on the 11th. Okay. 6.30 our time, 7.30 your time is good for you? Uh, yeah, although there's a thought that uh, it could it could be, then it doesn't matter, it could be earlier, maybe better off if it's earlier. Uh, yeah, let's make it earlier then, because everyone else uh, would want to go. Why don't we like make it, uh, I don't know, uh, some, uh, some other time, date, like, uh, I mean, the other time, like the fifth, uh, five, excuse me, five o'clock. I'm just looking at the calendar. That was, what, what day did I say? Eleven. Eleven. So, uh, how about uh, 5 p.m. my time, 4 p.m. your time? That's fine by me. Okay, thank you, thank you. Go for Roy Is that okay? Oh, it's for the Sanctan devotees, you mean? Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's a Saturday. Otherwise, uh, Saturday evening is usually, you know, an event evening. Yeah. Okay. So, not just for me, but for others as well. Well, let's leave that, and then we, we've got a month to uh, correspond between now and then. Okay, good. That's exactly a month, month down the road. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.